Hello with Gabby Logan. School referees on strike in Scotland. Snow trying to ruin the fixture list, but we've had a wonderful afternoon. Three, a kick, seven, three o'clock kickoffs taking place in the Premier League. There are goals going on all around. A whole lot more to tell you about. And I've been kept company all afternoon by the wonderful Messrs Crooks and Keown. They're desperate to impart their knowledge and wisdom, but they'll have to wait a little bit longer. I'm going to bring you right up to speed with what's happening in the Premier League. And it's Aston Villa two, Arsenal four. A result from lunchtime. The Gunners managed to hold on to a two-nil half-time lead this week. Uh, Shamak and Wilshire amongst Arsenal's scorers. Kieran Clark with both Villa goals. Bolton nil, Blackpool. Two. Bolton have actually scored. Bolton one. Blackpool two. Everton uh, one. West Brom three. Uh, uh, Fulham one. Birmingham one. Manchester United seven. Blackburn Rovers nil. Yes, seven. Dimitar Berbatov has helped himself to five of those in a fairly one sided contest. It's Stoke nil. Manchester City nil. West Ham three. Wigan Athletic nil. And it's Wolves one. Sunderland one. There's only one place to go, isn't there? Old Trafford. Let's go there. And Harry Gray, you can tell us how seven nil happened. Fantastic, Gabby. Five incredible goals for Dimitar Berbatov in the most exhilarating football, surely, of the season so far. Uh, breathtaking at times, and Manchester United had so many great contributions. Rooney looks very, very good indeed, really sharp. And Nani's Ronaldo-esque, he played fantastically well, scored a great goal himself. Uh, Park got the other one. 7-0, Blackburn Rovers have just been wiped off the floor here, and Berbatov has been absolutely exhilarating. 7-0, more to come, I think. Well, of course, the team who were created when the Glazers took over Manchester United, FC United, the fans who were disenchanted, are in the second round of the FA Cup. They're playing at the Withdean Stadium against Brighton and they're in the lead. Yes, they could be in the third round of the FA Cup if they can hold on. They've got a tough ask ahead, haven't they, Andy Barwell? Yes, they have. It is the team in red shirts and white shorts who are ahead here against the League One leaders, Brighton, who fire over the bar again. It just shows the romance of the cup, though, Gabby. Uh, Nicky Platt's goal, five minutes uh, just before the half-time break, gave FC United the lead. Uh, they'd been uh, second best for most of this game. They're having to uh, hang on now with ten men. Their central defender, Scott McManus, has just been sent off for a poor challenge, but it's still Brighton nil. FC United of Manchester won. That would be an upset, and so would that. Uh, Tamworth have taken the lead. Danny Thomas on 75 minutes at Brunton Park. Uh, Carlisle, of course, uh, are ninth in League One. Tamworth are 19th in the Conference Premiership. Um, we talk about Manchester United, first of all, and mm. their seven goals plus Blackburn mm. Rovers and the performance in particular of Dimitar Berbatov. Well, I mean, just looking at the central defenders. We'll do that, but let's go to Molyneux, because there's been a goal at Molyneux. Good Roger Eddie. Johnson. Good Eddie. It's Wolverhampton Wanderers 1, Sunderland 2. Danny Welbeck has just headed Sunderland's goal here. Fine header from around 10 yards out, which Wayne Hennessy couldn't keep out. It's tough on Wolves. They were the better side in the first half. They took the lead just after the break with a fine finish from Kevin Foley. But Sunderland then right on the front foot, bringing three men on up front, Jean to joined Welbeck and Bent, well, Bent equalised, and now uh, and, and now Welbeck has given Sunderland the lead. They've come from behind, and they lead Wolves, who've yet to keep a clean sheet this season, by two goals to one. Four goals in three games. I know you want to talk about him. This young lad came on a substitute against Spurs for Sunderland, changed the game, and with every game he grows, he's starting to look a player. Remember, he's a United player, but he's starting to look top class. Hasagian comes on. Brusco is much more positive in the way that they play, changed the game completely. Sunderland, way better team after that. It's all getting very dramatic at the bottom of the table, isn't it? With Wolves now heading for another defeat. Well, West Ham said today was save our season day. And Jackie Early, at the moment, they're doing just that. Well, happy days. What was all the fuss all about? It's West Ham 3, Wigan Athletic nil, and Scott Parker scoring the third goal. The captain, fantastic. And surely that secured only their second league win of the season. A fine goal it was too as well. Parker broke from the halfway line. He fed a binner on the left. A binner slipped the ball back inside to Parker, who slotted the ball past Al Habsi. Earlier on, towards the end of the first half, Barami had fired West Ham in front after Pickion nodded down. Jakobsen's floated pass for Barami to fire home. A binner scored a superb second 
second in the second half, rifled in a low left-footed drive just inside the post. And Marrow Biselli had a wonderful chance to make it 2-1 to pull a goal back from the penalty spot. He'd only just come on the pitch. It was his first touch after Gabidon had brought down cleverly. But uh, Green made a good save, diving low to his left. But why would a player take a penalty when he hadn't even had a touch of the ball yet? Something we'll ask Roberto Martinez later. West Ham 3, Wigan 0. Jackie, thank you very much. Just a reminder, the tennis continues on BBC Two, but we're heading to Goodison Park now, where the Toffees are finding things a bit sticky against West Brom. Andrew James. They are indeed, Gabby. It's Everton 1, West Brom 3, and West Brom really have been uh, rampant in this game. They were 2-0 up at half-time. Sharna scored his fifth goal in five years against Everton from a powerful header to put West Brom ahead, then a marvellous brunt free kick into the top corner uh, eluded uh, Howard. Cahill got one back. That was his eighth goal of the season for Everton. They rely on him so much just before half-time, but then a bizarre twist of uh, circumstances. Everton made a double sub, sending on uh, Beckford and Sahar to increase their strike force, but inexplicably, the captain Arteta stamped on uh, a West Brom player, the uh, defender Yara, and got a straight red card, so Everton were straight back onto the back foot, and the giant Cameroon substitute, Soman Joy, has got a third goal now for West Bromwich Albion. It's Everton 1, West Brom 3. Choi scored that just as we came on air, and so did Bolton score a goal. We haven't heard about it yet, Naz Premji. You're at the Reebok Stadium. Tell us all about it. Yes, yeah, Bolton Wanderers 1, Blackpool 2. It was Martin Petrov. Davis with a short ball to the edge of the area, and Petrov rifled one into the top corner. Kingston motionless, and that has lifted the Reebok, and they are throwing everything at Blackpool. They've gone close. Davis has inexplicably missed. That's Kevin Davis from a few yards out. Kitchen sink kitchen tumble dryer you can throw the toaster any kind of appliance they are chucking everything at Blackpool and Blackpool somehow are holding firm at the moment it's still Bolton Wanderers 1 Blackpool 2. Naz thank you let's go to the Britannia Stadium Ivan Gaskell you're the proud owner of the only match in the Premier League with no goals. I don't know how because Stoke are knocking at the Manchester City door and hard Milner has just about cleared off the line from a sure cross header uh, the pressure is on 11 minutes left all very open in a first half that was dominated in fact by Stoke all very tight in a second half that's been dominated by no one really Stoke may yet regret a stack of early missed chances Manchester City uh, well, they uh, have slowly worked their way back into it here. If you're a betting woman, Gabby, a goalless draw, though, clearly the favourite here. Commentary have doubled their lead over Scunthorpe at Glanford Park. Uh, you're putting your hand up very polite. What do you want to say? The game at, at Goodison is, is on the verge of getting out of hand. I've just seen Arteta stud uh, Yara. Cahill. 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 There's a goal at Molyneux. Roger Johnson, is it an equaliser or have they extended their lead, Sunderland? It's an equaliser and it's Stephen Hunt, ten minutes from time, after Sunderland failed to clear a corner. It eventually, eventually came back in. In fact, it was a free kick. Eventually came back in. It was loose inside the six yards box. And Stephen Hunt hammered it in. His first goal for the club gives Wolves a lifeline. They're on for a point. It's levelled up at two apiece for 10 to play. OK, so let's talk it's first of all about goal or not over the line at Stoke before we go on to getting out of control at Goodison. Screen, I know, yeah. Uh, I, didn't think it was off. I, think, I didn't think it was over the line. No. I thought I think, uh, I think Milner. It was, it Johnson. It's Milner that it clears Milner it on the line, yeah. the line, yeah. 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 It's OK, we're going to go to the Britannia Stadium. Ivan Gaskell, you've got a goal! Yes, I did just predict that it would be a goalless draw here. That shows how much I... Uh, no, uh, don't follow my tips because Manchester City have taken the lead here dramatically with nine minutes left. It really came from nowhere where Stoke looked to, to have everything under control. But Micah Richards appeared on the right-hand side of the Stoke penalty area. And really with uh, Stoke's defenders for once standing off a little way after Milner had found him, it actually was a very neat turn and dummy by Richards but he found the corner of the net you might ask a question of Begovic maybe he shouldn't have been beaten from there but Stoke after all of that pressure I suggested might live to regret those missed chances Manchester City have just made them pay well if it stays as it is that'll be eight clean sheets that Man City have kept this season only Chelsea have as many let's go to Craven Cottage David Garrido it's one apiece any signs of a winner 
Not really at this point. Decent game, though. Just a little bit stop-start. I'd say if it is going to go to either side, it would probably be Fulham on the current balance of play. Just a, a quick update on uh, the scoreline so far. One of the pieces, you say, Sebastian Larsson, giving the visitors the lead. Fine right foot strike just inside the far post. Superb work from Alexander Kleb in the build-up, breaking from inside his own half. Uh, Fulham came out firing, though, after the break. Succession of corners. One to the far post, guided back across goal by Zoltan Gira. And Clint Dempsey rose above Aaron Hughes to bundle it home for the equaliser. That's the American's sixth goal of the season and he also forced a decent save from Ben Foster at his near post. Roger Johnson has rattled the Fulham bar with another header at the other end. One apiece as you say and we've got around six minutes left plus any time for injuries. Oh it's been at least three minutes since I spoke to Harry Gration. Another goal but not the way you might think. Uh, maybe this is the Blackburn fight back uh, Gabby. Samba has scored but the way that Blackburn are making their way back to the halfway line very slowly, I think they realise it's consolation, but at least they're on the scoreboard from this mauling by this incredible Manchester United. 7-1 Samba. He hasn't scored twice, obviously. There's a slight misprint there. And the lunchtime kickoff today was at Villa Park and Arsenal were desperate to put a terrible week behind them. Jonathan Pearce was watching for us. Villa 2, Arsenal 4. Villa simply didn't turn up in the first half. Shamak had had one cleared off the line and the efforts had poured in on the Villa goal before Arshavin cut in from the left to shoot Arsenal ahead after 39 minutes. And Sami Nasri volleyed home six minutes later to double the lead, moments after squandering a great one-on-one -on -one chance. Villa took Pires off at half-time, switched to 4-4-2 and scored beautifully through 19-year-old Kieran Clark from the edge of the box four minutes after the restart. Shamak almost immediately restored that two-goal buffer before a Clark header in off the bar worried Arsenal again, only for a diving Wiltshire header in stoppage time to settle it. Arsenal, in truth, should have put the game to bed way before that. They could have scored eight or nine. As it is, four goals takes them top for a while. A goal at Upton Park, Jackie Oatley, is it a late comeback? It could possibly be, but surely too late. Wigan have pulled a goal back and it's Tom Cleverley, a fantastic finish, showing his Manchester United quality after fine play down the right-hand side by Charles and Zogbier. Skipped through a couple of defenders and then the ball was just nudged away from him by Gabidon, straight into the path of Cleverley, who had plenty to do, and he swept the ball over the top of Rob Green, man of the match, who could do very little about it, but we have... Three and a half minutes remaining, so surely it'll be too little too late. Wigan have been very poor. West Ham three, Wigan one. Another goal at Goodison Park, Andrew James. Yusuf Malumbu, the Congolese midfielder, he's been all over the park for West Brom this afternoon and he's uh, got a goal as the ball was played into him. Good little one-two played and uh, although it got a deflection off Sylvain Distan, it's a fourth goal for West Bromwich Albion. But look out for Jermaine Beckford's book of missed opportunities on Match of the Day tonight. A hat-trick of glorious or inglorious, as the Everton fans would say, misses from Beckford. And it's Everton 1, West Brom 4. Inverness have got an equaliser. Ian Turner can tell us all about it at Celtic Park. Oh, what a finish we've got here, Gabby. Seven minutes left. Inverness, who, if they don't lose today, will have gone a full year without losing an away league match. Have come back from two goals down to level it at two. Okay, Sung Young and Paddy McCourt had Celtic two up. Then on 69 minutes, Richie Foran scored for Inverness to get them back in. And a moment ago, Grant Monroe with a low header managed to get it past Fraser Forster in the Celtic goal. Celtic two, Inverness two. Let's go back to Goodison Park. Andrew James, he's just scored a goal. Now he's been sent off, Malumbu. Explain. It's a, a second yellow card, uh, Gabby. He's uh, quite frustrated about it. He felt that the tackle won the ball for him, Malumbu. Uh, but the referee, Lee Mason, was right next to it, barely a metre away. He's uh, instantly reached for his card. It did seem harsh. Beckford didn't like the challenge, uh, but it was a second yellow and uh, Malumbu is away down the tunnel. Both sides down to ten men. You're not happy with that? I think it's a poor decision by Lee Mason. I really do. I mean, it's an innocuous tackle. To send a lad off it's for Beckford. that is just ridiculous. He books him off the back of Beckford's reaction because he flies in the air. But it's a poor decision. OK, let's go to the Withdean Stadium because you can see there Brighton have got their equaliser and if you're a romantic, like it might not be the end to this match uh, that we'd hoped, Andy Barwell. No, it's the Brighton equaliser. There was some urgency from the home side over the past few minutes or so. It was a cross from the left from Marcus Painter. A header from the assistant manager, Mauricio Tarico, with the header. It looked like it was Francisco Santos who may have got the last touch on the line, but I'm sure Tarico is going to claim it. Anyway, it's now Brighton 1, FC United 1. What a goal at the Reebok Stadium, Naz Premji. 
Oh, it's absolutely mesmerising from Bolton Wanderers. A lovely move started by Kevin Davis. A back heel from Johan Helmander. A flick from Klasnic. Then comes Mark Davis's cool finish to level things up. It's no more than they deserve, Gabby. They have been peppering at Blackpool. And for the umpteenth occasion, Blackpool have let a two-goal lead slip. But what a sumptuous goal. Garth and Martin must be absolutely foaming at the mouth of that one. It was a superb finish. Bolton Wanderers 2. Blackpool too. Indeed, their chops are dripping at that goal. Garth said it's the finest he's seen for at least a few minutes anyway. What a day we've had today. It's been incredible, hasn't it? Let's go to Loftus Road. Uh, the league leaders are leading Cardiff. Mark Bishop, they, it must be rocking round the corner. Loftus Road is absolutely rocking, Gabby. You're quite right. Foundations going everywhere. Queen's Park Rangers 2, Cardiff City 1. Terrific advert for the game. It looks as if Neil Warnock's high flyers are going to extend their unbeaten league run to 19. That means just one away from equaling the club record. It's been a pulsating game. Big talking point. Just before you came to me, though, surely the referee failing to give Cardiff City a penalty when Bothroyd was upended by Forlan. A penalty, surely it was too. But nevertheless, uh, that uh, goal from Bellamy wiped out by Kasper Gorks, 1-1. And then Adel Tarat to make it 2-1. His fifth goal in six matches. Capacity crowd, terrific game, 2-1 QPR. A goal at Molyneux, Roger Johnson. A winner for Wolves, probably. Sylvan Ebanks Blake in the 89th minute, putting Wolverhampton Wanderers back in front. A fine goal from the edge of the penalty area after a good cross in from the left hand side. And the substitute lashed it past Craig Gordon. Sunderland looked the more likely to win it, having come from one down. But Wolves now lead by three goals to two. Well, there's plenty to see on Match of the Day tonight, but perhaps if that is the winner, Mick McCarthy's yeah. reaction is beautiful. Well, he, he, was, he was the manager of Sunderland not that long ago. I have to say, it's a great goal, goal, but I can't understand why Sunderland are defending. It's kamikaze defending. There's a few minutes to go. They've got a point, you know, in the bank. Why are they putting all, it at risk? All credit to Ebanks Blake, though. He's come off the bench and he's done it for his team there, and uh, you want to see the celebration. A great he's, individual He's throwing punches goal, in the end, Mick McCarthy. It's a great finish. Yeah. Uh, Carlisle, by the way, are now ahead against Tamworth at Brunton Park. Uh, let's go to the Riverside and check in with Richard Ascom. Hi, Gabby. Middlesbrough 2, Hull 2. A throwback to the snow-covered pitches of the 70s. This one, we're just missing the old orange ball, but in terrible conditions, both sets of players have warmed up a small, hardy crowd here with plenty of goals. Corrin and Gerrard for the visitors in the first half, either side of a Leroy Lita header who levelled matters just, just after the break. Scott McDonald with a smart finish for Borough doing that. Corrin, the star of the show for Hull. The tricky Emnes has stood out for Borough. A mini revival. Gary Speed, Sheffield United, are three goals down at Ashton Gate. Hamish Marshall. Yeah, both of these sides came into this game looking to extend decent runs, but Sheffield United may feel hard done by by the referee Pat Miller. Two Brett Pittman penalties in the first half, the second more controversial for a handball, but Bristol City in front, and the Blades' comeback hopes were ended when Richard Cresswell was given a straight red for a challenge on Marvin Elliott just before the break. A third direct from a corner from Jamie McAllister has put City on course for a third win in four. Time's almost up. Bristol City 3, Sheffield United nil. Commentary looking good for the win at Glanford Park. Damien Johnson can confirm. Yes, that's right. They're 2-0 up McSheffrey with a first-half goal and a second-half goal against the run of play. Uh, Marlon King claimed it, but the ball clearly hit the post and went in off the Scunthorpe United goalkeeper Joe Murphy for an own goal. They've been uh, decent value at Coventry, although Scunthorpe have improved after the break and they lead 2-0 Coventry. Full-time at Rugby Park, Brian McLaughlin. How are the teams and how are the Israeli referees? Well, first of all, the teams have finished Kilmarnock 2, Aberdeen 0. Connor Salmon with his 14th goal of the season in the first half. Jamie Hamill then scored with a penalty five minutes into the second half. Aberdeen were awful throughout the match. The goalkeeper for Kilmarnock this afternoon, Cami Bell, did not have a safety make throughout the 90. As for the referee, Mr Ali Hackman from Israel, he dished out four yellow cards through the game. No complaints from players or managers. He cruised through the match, as did Kilmarnock. As for Aberdeen, they were woeful. Kilmarnock 2, Aberdeen 0. It's one apiece at the Withdean Stadium, but FC United down to 10 men. Andy Barwell, are they hanging on there? They are, they're doing OK as well. All the noise you can probably hear is from the FC United fans, some 850 of them to my right. They've been standing up, singing and dancing all afternoon. The Brighton crowd have been largely subdued, and to be honest, Brighton just looking a little ragged again now. And whatever happens, it could be FC United of Manchester at least in the third round draw, because it's one apiece here at the Withdeep. 
An equaliser, is it? I'm a Gaskell at the Britannia Stadium. Yes, it is. Stoke City, their supporters are doing the report for me. Etherington has found a precious finish just when it looked like hope was draining from Stoke City. It was a fantastic reverse back heel from Tunchai. A little bit of craft which Stoke badly needed and Etherington's finish was classy. It's been a terrific game and it's about what Stoke deserved. 1-1, well into injury time. And the full-time whistle has blown at Old... All the hard uh, work done by Alexander Klev, running from his own half, but selfless enough to pick out Sebastian Larsson, who struck it sumptuously past Mark Schwarzer. Fulham's best fells at the start of the second half. They duly got their equaliser through Clint Dempsey, beating Aaron Hughes to the ball to nod home. They had chances to win it through Dempsey again and Diamante Camera, but Ben Foster stood his ground on both occasions, and Roger Johnson headed against the bar at the other end. Both sides remain in trouble towards the wrong end of the table. Fulham won, Birmingham won. Is this the day that West Ham's season turn? Let's uh, go to Upton Park and Jackie Oatley can tell us whether she thinks Save Our Season Day uh, worked. <laughs> well, they got the win they needed, that's for sure. West Ham 3, Wigan 1, and Tom Cleverley's fine late goal proved merely a consolation for Wigan, who were frankly poor throughout. They didn't deserve anything from the game. Very little happened in the first half hour or so, but the game sprang to life when Barami slipped the ball past Al Habsi. Picture of Binner fired a fine second left footed from the angle before Baselli should have made it. 2 1. The Wigan sub saw his penalty saved by Rob Green, who was Baselli's first touch of the game. Scott Parker made played a 1 2 with a binner before nudging home the third, and Tom Cleverley's classy strike was the last of the game, though Gahori was ruled offside as he fired in late on. So West Ham's season may not have been saved as such, but it's gone some way to saving the job of the manager. West Ham 3, Wigan 1. Jackie, thank you. Let's go to Goodison Park. It's five games now since Everton had a win. These are tricky times. A good result for West Brom, though, Andrew James. Yes, indeed, uh, Gabby. It's 30 years since they won here at Goodison and it's Everton's third home league defeat of the season. West Brom found themselves 2-1 up at uh, half-time. Powerful header from Shana, marvellous free kick from Brunt answered only by Cahill's header, his eighth goal of the season. They depend on him so much. But uh, Everton changed things round in the second half, sending on Beckford and Sahar for a more out-and-out -out striking approach. But they uh, did themselves no good whatsoever as Arteta, the captain, stamped on the West Brom fullback Yara. Instant red card for him and that, coupled with a trio of dreadful, dreadful misses by Jermaine Beckford, uh, meant that uh, West Brom survived and went on, indeed, to better the scoreline. 3-1 with the substitute, Choi, great goal from the Cameroonie, and then Malumbu scored a fourth before moments later being sent off himself for a second yellow. Everton 1, West Bromwich Albion 4. To Molyneux, well... uh, a rare Wolves winner. You should have seen the celebrations. They've beaten Sunderland by three goals to two. Let's go to the Reebok Stadium now. Naz Premji's seen a great fight back from the home side, but Blackpool will really rue the fact that they were really in control of this game. They certainly were, Gabby. Bolton Wanderers 2, Blackpool 2. Blackpool took a two-goal lead thanks to two headers, one in each half from Ian Everton and Luke Varney, courtesy of two super deliveries uh, from corners from Elliot Grond. And the seaside, a soft centre, though, came apparent. How many times have they been two up and let it slip? Sub Martin Petrov scored a scorcher from the edge of the area, 15 minutes from time. And then the goal of the game in the final minute, Kevin Davis found Johan Elmander. He backheeled to Ivan. Klasnic, who flicked the ball to Mark Davis. It was scintillating. He finished past Richard Kingston. Well worth watching on Match of the Day tonight. 98 goals now for games involving these two sides. Who says the Premier League's boring? It's finished here. Bolton Wanderers 2, Blackpool 2. It's not finished at the Withdean Stadium, but the romance just might be about to end. Andy Barwell. Six minutes of stoppage time. Two minutes into that, it's Elliot Bennett to take a penalty kick, and he misses it. Elliot Bennett, the Brighton player, has missed it. In fact, he was saved by Sam Ashton. He got a touch to it and pushed it wide. Brighton had a real chance there to end the game here by uh, scoring what would have been the winner because we've got so little time to play here. But a great save by Sam Ashton, the FC United keeper. They're still in it here and the corner's taken and the ball's gone wide. Oh, FC United of Manchester live again. It's one apiece here. 
might yet be in the draw for the third round of the... Uh, ...remain unbeaten in the league. Mark Bishop. Queen's Park Rangers 2, Cardiff City 1. The Championship's match of the day, referee Kevin Friend. In the end, no friend of the Welsh Giants who were denied a blatant penalty six minutes from time when Jay Bothroyd was tripped by Forlan in front of 2,500 Cardiff supporters. No matter, as you said, QPR remain the Football League's only unbeaten side. They're now just one away from equaling a club record of 20 unbeaten. They were magnificent today. Comeback goals from Kasper Gorks and the impressive Adel Tarat, his fifth in six matches, made it three points for Neil Warnock's side. The Welsh pocket rocket, Craig Bellamy, twisted and tormented the QPR back four in the first half. He was brilliant. He got Cardiff's opener, but Neil Warnock's side, they pushed the turbocharger in the second half and they really stormed at Cardiff. Leon Clark's effort off the line by McNaughton. It could have been 3 1. Great game, great effort for football. QPR 2. Cardiff City 1. Celtic have now dropped seven points from their last 12. Ian Turner's at Celtic Park. Inverness came from two goals down to extend their unbeaten away league record to 12 months with a great comeback. Paddy McCourt with a superb goal put Celtic two up after Ki Sung Young had opened the scoring, but a fine second half from Terry Butcher's side brought its reward with goals from Richie Foran and Grant Munro. Celtic two, Inverness Caledonian Thistle two. Full-time whistle at the Withdean Stadium, Andy Barwell. What a finish. 1-1, FC United are in the third-round draw. A 1-1 draw here. Nicky Platt gave them the lead five minutes before half-time. The uh, upset looked on the cards. The dismissal of centre-half uh, Scott McManus proved costly. Brighton got an equaliser through Mauricio Tarico, and Elliot Bennett had his spot kick saved in the fifth minute of stoppage time. No guesses who, to uh, who the FC United fans want in the next round. He finished 1-1 here the team they want in the next round. OK, let's get the full classified results now with Tim Gudgeon. In the Barclays Premier League, Aston Villa 2, Arsenal 4. Bolton Wanderers 2, Blackpool 2. Everton 1, West Bromwich Albion 4. Fulham 1, Birmingham City, one. Manchester United, seven. Blackburn Rovers, one. Stoke City, one. Manchester City, one. West Ham United, three. Wigan Athletic, one. Wolves, three. Sunderland, two. In the Empire Championship, Barnsley, nil. Watford, nil. Bristol City, three. Sheffield United, nil. Burnley and Derby County kick off at 20 past five. Crystal Palace 1, Doncaster Rovers 0. Middlesbrough 2, Hull City 2. Preston North End 0, Millwall 0. Queen's Park Rangers 2, Cardiff City 1. Reading 0, Leeds United 0. Scunthorpe United 0, Coventry City 2. In the Empire League 1, Rochdale 1, Oldham Athletic 1. In League Two, Morecambe one, Crew Alexandra two. And in the FA Cup, sponsored by Eon, second round, AFC Wimbledon nil, Stevenage two, Brighton Hove Albion one, FC United one, Burton Albion three, Chesterfield one, Bury one, Peterborough United two, Carlisle United three, Tamworth two. Charlton Athletic 2, Luton Town 2, Colchester United 1, Swinton Supermarine 0, Darlington 0, York City 2, Dover Athletic 1, Aldershot Town 0 is the latest score, Hartlepool United's match with Yeovil Town postponed, Hereford United 2, Lincoln City 2, Huddersfield Town 6, Macclesfield Town 0. And continuing the FA Cup results, Notts County's match with AFC Bournemouth postponed. Sheffield Wednesday 3, Northampton Town 2. Southampton 3, Cheltenham Town 0. Torquay United 1, Walsall 0. Wickham Wanderers 3, Chelmsford City 1. In the Blue Square Premier, Barrow's match with Kidderminster postponed. Cambridge United 4, Altrincham 0. Forest Green Rovers 2, Rushton and Diamonds 2. Kettering Town and Gateshead's match postponed. 
Newport County 2, Hayes and Yetting United 1. Southport and Eastbourne Boroughs match postponed. Wrexham 1, Mansfield Town 1. Clyde Silvank, Scottish Premier League, Celtic 2, Inverness Caledonian Thistle 2. Hamilton Academical 0, St Mirren 0. Hibernian 0, St Johnston 0. And Kilmarnock 2, Aberdeen 0. In the Carling Premiership, Ballymena United 1, Crusaders 1. Coleraine 1, Porterdown 3. Donegal Celtics match with Glenavon, postponed. Dungannon Swifts 0, Cliftonville 1. Glentoran 2, Newry City 0. And Lisbon Distillery 0, Linfield 4. And uh, a couple of late, one late kickoff, in fact, to tell you about uh, Dover Athletic 1, Aldershot Town 0. If it stays like that, it'd be a bit of a shock. 42 places between them. They kicked off because of crowd congestion. Uh, that's, of course, for a place in the hat in the third round draw. Let's have a little look at the tables then, starting with the Premier League. And Manchester United moved top for the first time this season. They also now boast the best goal difference following their comprehensive victory over Blackburn. Arsenal move above previous leaders Chelsea into second place after their win over Aston. Aston Villa and Manchester City and Bolton both drew. They stay fourth and fifth respectively. West Ham beat fellow strugglers Wigan to close within three points of safety. The Hammers had looked set to move off the foot of the table until Wolves secured a late winner at home to Sunderland. Everton's heavy home defeat sees them slide to 16th. And the Championship, Queen's Park Rangers opened up a five-point lead after they beat their nearest rivals, Cardiff. Swansea's defeat last night gives Derby the opportunity to go third by winning the evening kickoff at Burnley today. And Coventry are up four places to fifth. At the bottom, Preston remained three points adrift of Middlesbrough, while Crystal Palace remain in the bottom three despite their victory today. There were defeats for Scunthorpe and Sheffield United, while Leicester play on Monday. And the SPL, oh, sorry, the Blue Square Premier League. AFC Wimbledon may have been knocked out of the FA Cup earlier today, but they still... A top of the league table. Crawley and Luton also in cup action. They stay second and third. Newport County closed within four points of top spot after victory this afternoon. Altrincham at the bottom. Uh, stay there after their 13th defeat of the season. Hayes and Yedding also lost. Southport and Histon complete the relegation places. And the SPL, where Rangers remain on top after Celtic blew a two-goal lead at home to Inverness. The leaders play Dundee United at Tannadice tomorrow. Hearts go in search of a fifth Successive win at Motherwell tomorrow. Hamilton remain bottom, although they've drawn level on points with Aberdeen. Here then are the main headlines from the Premier League today. Aston Villa 2, Arsenal 4. Uh, a great win for Arsenal after a difficult week for them. Sees them go second in the table tonight. West Ham 3, Wigan 1. They said it was save our season day today. And indeed, uh, they've done the business there. Avram Grant surely earning a stay of execution as they move within two points of Wigan. Bolton 2, Blackpool 2. Entertainment galore at the Reebok Stadium as Bolton rescue a late point against their Lancashire neighbours. Mark Davis's last-minute leveller completes the host's comeback from two goals down. Everton won West Brom for the Baggies win for the first time in a month in fine style at Goodison Park. Chris Brunt's superb free kick stole the show. Trophy skipper Mikel Arteta was sent off for Everton. And it was Fulham won, Birmingham won. Larson gave the Blues the lead only for Dempsey to haul Mark Hughes side level. It's Fulham ninth draw of the season. And you can see every goal, every incident, and there were plenty of them. 36 goals in total. Match of the day, 10.20 tonight on BBC One. Messrs Lineker, Shearer and Lawrenson are at the helm, trying to get through all of that in the time allotted. And right after that, it's the Football League show at 11.40 with Manish. Plenty to look at there as well. And tomorrow, a great derby match from the Championship, the East Anglia derby. It's Norwich against Ipswich. Coverage from 1 o'clock. Jake Humphrey will guide you through the action. And, of course, match of the day two tomorrow. Highlights of Newcastle against Chelsea. Can they move back to the top of the table? And it's Tottenham against Liverpool at 10.30 on BBC Two. Uh, let's talk to Alistair Mann, though, who was at Old Trafford this afternoon. Um, we imagine this could be an entertaining affair, Alistair. Have you seen a game like that for a while? I'm sure he's saying no. 
<laughs> we'll have to go back to Alistair Mann in a moment, but um, it was scintillating stuff, wasn't it? And everybody's been saying Manchester United are there in spite of the fact they haven't played well. That was playing well. I don't think I've seen One, a striker two, three, four, five, score six, seven, five goals uh, and three of them were ricocheted. Everything that could have fallen for Bibitov fell for him, but he put him away. Alistair counting there indicates he's back with us. Alistair, that was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, we can't normally count as commentators, but we had to commentate and count today because the goals just kept on coming. United were absolutely superb. And, you know, it, I know they scored early, but within sort of five or ten minutes, you could tell they were fluent, the movement was excellent. And it was the first time that Berbatov and Rooney had played together since September in the Premier League. And Alex Ferguson had been talking in the week about the fact that he'd been playing different combinations up front, but he felt Rooney and Berbatov were his best, and the two of them in tandem today were magnificent. They were looking for each other, they were playing little passes and movement, the telepathy seemed to be there. And uh, even at the end, it was quite significant that with Berbatov having bagged so many goals, on his final goal, he actually tried to play Rooney in, but the ball bounced and fell back into his path again. He couldn't do anything else but score and get number five. And it was just that kind of day. United was superb. Blackburn, normally, and certainly in recent weeks, they've had resolve, they've had organisation, they were pulled apart. This was an awesome message from Manchester United. They were breathtaking. Alistair, yeah, and Blackburn Rovers have won three of their last four games. They, you know, they were going into this, you'd think, with a fair amount of confidence. That would be completely squashed out of them tonight. Vidic and uh, Ferdinand could have put deck chairs up on the halfway <laughs> line. It was, you know, it was that sort of game. I mean, today, Berbatov is the player that they thought they'd signed when he came from Tottenham. He was magnificent. All the flicks, the tricks. Rooney as well was involved. Nani was looking like Ronaldo on the wing. They really are. Park, another one. Jason Scored Park. his goal. So many outstanding performances and just at the right time for Manchester United. It's ominous, isn't it, really, when they hit this kind of form? And they've been there anyway at the top of the table. It's getting to that part of the year, isn't it? January, when they start to sort of take off again. Not been playing brilliantly. Um, top of the table. Unbeat, uh, unbeaten. Unbeaten. Um, it looks... They're coming good at the, at the right time. It looked like Manchester City were coming good, didn't it, last week? But today, uh, they let a one-goal lead slip. It was one apiece uh, with them and Stoke at the Britannia Stadium. And uh, Ivan Gaskell is talking to Roberto Mancini. Immediate emotions at the end of that one. <laughs> we, are, we are disappointed because we considered going the last uh, minute. But uh, I think that uh, we deserve to win this game because we play really good. The second half, first half, maybe <clears throat> Stoke had a long ball through in this situation and finish. We didn't consider any chance to score. I disappoint for this because the, the squad deserved to win. Freezing cold day, the scarf came in handy. Yeah, uh, very freezing. <laughs> uh, what have you sort of learned about your team today in a, in a difficult environment, a freezing cold day, uh, a, a tough place to come? You, you've had to see a different side to your personality as a team today, perhaps. Yes, but I'm, I'm happy because uh, the guys continue to play football. For me, this is very important. Also today, in a difficult pitch, um, because it is very difficult to play football. And we fight in the first half when they continue to play a long ball, long ball, long ball. In the second half, we play football, fantastic football. I think that we serve to score two free goals in the second half. But this is a football. From Ivan's account and you know what you saw, that seemed like a fair scoreline. Probably was, yeah. But you, City have missed a golden opportunity yeah. there. St Man United have won at Stoke. They're at the top of the table. If City wants to be there amongst the top, they've got to get those points when they're ahead away from home. Tunchai's skill for the goal, Everington's equaliser, is fantastic. Yeah. Finally, Tony Bullis is playing people that can play with a bit more technique. And it was that little bit of sublime skill that managed to break Man City down. That's a message for him. Let's talk a little bit about Everton, who are now two points off the drop zone. They've only picked up three points in their last 15. Uh, we saw some petulance from Arteta today, which, mm. you know, if you see it tonight on Match of the Day, you will wonder what the heck he's doing. Turning point, Gabby. Yeah. No doubt in my mind. 2-1, uh, two one, they're chasing, the, tra chasing um, uh, West Bromwich Albion. Um, uh, Yara, uh, Gonzalo Yara, has a couple of tussles, uh, tackles Arteta, Arteta stamps on him. But what then follows is extraordinary. Arteta then starts to argue with the officials, refuses to go off, as though he's got some case to stay on the pitch. And he would have done had he not, you know, committed the transgression, wouldn't Absolutely. he? Absolutely. You know, once he stamped, uh, stamped on the player, there was nowhere for him to go but off the field. He's okay. let his teammates down because at that point, you know, they were right back in it. 
Super afternoon. Stay with me, guys. I know you're going to be with me on the red button, but you can have your say too. 606 with Chappers and Savage. Call 0500 909 Text 85058. A standard rate supplier. You can email as well. We're going off to the red button now. Plenty of reaction there. The goals as well from the championship. Top of the table clash at Loftus Road. Hopefully I'll see you there. Bye-bye. <laughs>